What would you do if you were 14 years old and found yourself selected to be the ruler of an entire country and be in court where you are unsure of who is trying to control or remove you to secure their place in power? That's exactly the situation that Iyasu V, commonly known as Lij Iyasu, found himself in 1909, Ethiopia. So how did this teenage ruler adopt to his new role? That's what we're going to find out in this episode of Humble History. Let's get into it right now. As Minilik was nearing the end of his life, the question of a successor appeared. His first choice for successor was his cousin Ras Makunin. However, Ras Makunin had died before Minilik. And as Minilik began to become incapacitated near the end of his life, many players contended for the throne. The first of which was Taitu, wife of Minilik and Empress of Ethiopia. Taitu had always played a strong role in the administration as well as established a place in the mind of the people. Historian Baru Zode wrote of her saying, A woman of exceptional strength of character, Taitu had played an important role in the glorious events of her husband's reign. She was the real founder of Addis Ababa. Even more than Minilik, who was prone to compromise, she had seen the outset through the subterfuges of Italian colonialism and was an unrelenting advocate of total rupture with the Italians. The abrogation of the treaty of which Ali was largely inspired by her. Her active role in the Battle of Adwa as strategist as well as a great moral force behind the Ethiopian warriors has come to be enshrined in tradition. Although she did not take the throne for herself, she arranged a marriage between her nephew Rasguk Sawale and Princess Zoditu, Minilik's daughter from a previous marriage. However, the nobles of Shoa, the most powerful nobles at the time, saw Taitu as a threat to their dominance in politics. They plotted and successfully removed her from the palace. The nobles picked Minilik's grandson Iyasu as his successor. Iyasu was only 14 years old at the time. His father was Ras Mikael, the Lord of Wello, one of the most powerful nobles in the country. Although Iyasu or his father were not directly aligned with the Shoan nobles, the Shoan nobles believed that they could easily control the young ruler. The nobles picked a lord loyal to them to be Iyasu's regent. However, the young Iyasu had no intention of being anyone's puppet. With Taitu removed, Iyasu, the appointed successor, had less power impending his ascension. Then his regent Ras Tasamma's death opened the door for his complete control of power. Even before 1911, two years before Minilik's death, the teenage Iyasu had become the de facto leader. Although his leadership had lowlights of playboy antics and reckless abandonment of responsibility, we will start by conveying his policies that progressed the country forward. Firstly, he abolished traditional systems that were harmful to the community, particularly the Kwaranya and Lebashai systems. Kwaranya was a practice where the accuser and the accused were chained together before they were brought before a court of law. As you can imagine, this led to several problems for those who followed it. The second system that was removed was Lebashai, a system of crime detection. In this system, a boy would be intoxicated by a hard drug where he wandered throughout the night and whichever house the boy collapsed upon was the house of the culprit. Iyasu's abolishment of both these customs further progressed Ethiopia's modernization process. A modern institution that Liji Iyasu established was the Trumbule, the precursors of a modern police force. The name Trimbule was a derivative of the word Tripoli because most of those who served the Trimbule were from the Italian annexation campaign of Libya. Iyasu also used modern auditing campaigns that revealed embezzlement by many nobles. However, Iyasu was seen by the nobles as a brash young ruler who questioned the old guard of Minilik. The established elites and nobles felt that he was too disruptive and he had put their authority in question. 
Iyasu did not believe in the need for older nobility, and he did not mince his words about it. He said to the old nobility, When I travel with my escort young people to visit and conquer new areas, you should not follow me without my permission. You can no longer keep up with us. You have grown old and fat. In your own time, you have followed my grandfather and conquered territories. Now, however, you cannot run and escape nor pursue and capture. Stay back and execute your duties. Iyasu had even grown tired of Minilik. Minilik had been incapacitated, but still lived, which put Iyasu in political limbo. He had planned to move Minilik out of the palace, and then even raided it, resulting in a brief gunfight before Iyasu withdrew. Iyasu as de facto ruler kept most of Minilik's chosen officials in the capital, but he became a threat to the Shan nobility. He openly detested them and undermined their power. Even when he had heard rumors that they were plotting against him, he said, could piss on the Shawan nobility and they would not have the guts to complain. Aside from the progressive decisions, Lijiyasu also made decisions that seemed to be based only on whim, including the decision to wed his royal cousin, Wezeru Sak Amyelesh Seifu, to his driver, as well as assigning his Syrian friend Yidlibi to Nagdrad of Dredwa, one of the key cities in Ethiopia, but arguably the most problematic appointment was making his own father king of Wollo and Tigray, making him in effect the most powerful man in Ethiopia with the title King of the North. On his foreign affairs, Iyasu had also supported Somali leaders who had fought against English and Italian colonialism. The English, Italians and French saw Iyasu as a threat to their East African colonies. All of this led to great animosity towards majority of the Ethiopian nobles and with Iyasu being unpopular with foreign powers, this put him in hot water. They plotted against him, choosing to use propaganda to turn the people against Iyasu. Most of the propaganda centered around Liji Iyasu's connection to the Ethiopian Muslim population. The Ethiopian empire had not resolved the question of Islam in its kingdom. In the modern era, beginning from Emperor Tedros, the Ethiopian Empire saw itself as an Orthodox Christian Empire with Orthodox Christian leaders. The nobility put into question Liji Yasu's Christianity by emphasizing his Muslim concubines. His common sightings with the Muslim population, as well as highlighting that his father Ras Mikhail had been born Muhammad Ali, and that he was only a recent convert to Christianity. Iyasu's enemies created the perception that Iyasu had planned to convert the country to Islam. Historians today note that there was no evidence to suggest any of this to be true. However, it was enough to gain the support of the public. In his absence from the capital, the nobles put in Iyasu's place Zauditu, Minilik's daughter, as the emperor. Iyasu was in Jijiga when he heard the news. Without a strong army to back him, Iyasu with a few thousand of his supporters lived as a fugitive. The only major battle to restore him to the throne was the battle between Ras Mikhail and the Shawan nobility. Ras Mikhail marched to Shawa with 120,000 troops and was met by 80,000 troop Shawan army. The battle ultimately ended in Mikhail's defeat. His son Iyasu was captured and lived as a prisoner under Zauditu. He initially lived under lavish house arrest, but escaped during the reign of the next emperor Haile Selassie. He was later captured and sent to a harsh fortress where he eventually died in 1935 at the age of 40. Iyasu's reign was one of the shortest in modern Ethiopian history. However, at such a young age, he made significant contributions during his tenure towards Ethiopia's modernization. That's it for today's episode of Humble History. Stay tuned for more on Minilik's reign as Emperor of Ethiopia. Please like and subscribe for more videos on African history and mythology. I'm your host Efrata Warku, and this episode was written by Adam Salu. We'll see you on the next episode.